Bye. An immense boulder the size of Mount Everest crashes into the Gulf of Mexico, driving entire species of dinosaurs to extinction in less than five minutes. But the worst is still to come. On the other side of the planet, there's still no sign of trouble. Mongolia is 12,000 kilometers from the impact. The scrubland here supports hundreds of dinosaur species. For a family of Coronosaurus, it's business as usual at a favorite watering hole. They can weigh four tons and grow to 12 meters in length. But they're vegetarians and docile except when they have to defend themselves or their offspring, which are now at their most vulnerable to the hungry predators that lurk around every corner. Armed with a razor-sharp, oversized claw on its hind feet, this is the jackal of the Cretaceous period. Sir Ornithoides, a very smart reptile, its brain-to-body-weight ratio is among the highest of any dinosaur. It's hungry, but it knows better than to take on a full-grown Coronosaurus. Not when there are easier targets. from the enraged mother as it should. And it can smell its mistake. It's a Mexican standoff between two very different kinds of dinosaur. One has the speed and smarts of a carnivore. But the other is 80 times larger. But the large herbivores of this world aren't made for fighting. And that's exactly what the Sauronithoides is counting on, especially when he's got backup. Speed and strategy give these small hunters the edge. intelligence is any guarantee of safety from the kind of enemy that is now approaching. On the other side of the planet, a fireball rises 160 kilometers above ground zero. 70 billion tons of pulverized stone and earth fill the upper atmosphere with a cloud of microscopic dust and glass. And it's spreading fast. This is the ejecta cloud. As the dust spreads at high altitude, trillions of tiny particles re-enter the atmosphere. The friction creates intense heat, an 800 degree dust cloud heating up everything beneath it. From their cliff-top perch in prehistoric British Columbia, the male and female Quetzalcoatlus have a clear view of the approaching cloud. Down in the valley, a thick ocean fog blocks out the sky. The heavy blanket of moisture makes it impossible to see the coming apocalypse. But the animals down here do get a warning. Not from above, but from below. When the asteroid struck, most 
most of the energy is deflected, out or up. Only 1% of the force travels down into the ground. But it's enough to ring the planet like a bell. Seismic waves radiate both across and through the Earth. 16 minutes and 40 seconds after impact, they reach British Columbia. In the valley, the ground shakes as the 11.1 earthquake ripples through the ground. Triceratops panic up the side of the valley in a desperate attempt to escape the tremors and fall in debris. Smaller animals take shelter underground. Meanwhile, the ejecta cloud is approaching at 16,000 kilometers per hour. It bakes the earth with unrelenting heat. electricity charge the cloud like a giant battery, creating a vast electrical storm. Superheated rocks shower the valley, a burning hail. The Quetzalcoatlus are fleeing the quake's devastation below, but there's no way to hide from a rain of fire. Only the valley floor can provide shelter, but they're too big to descend quickly. Until the male's tattered wings can no longer keep him aloft. If his mate doesn't find shelter, she'll be next. Triceratops emerges above the cool sea nest. They're almost out of the quake ravaged valley. When the ejecta cloud arrives, like a blowtorch. Dinosaur paradise just hours ago. North America is now a living hell. But the ejecta isn't finished yet. Not by a long shot. On December 10th.